The Journey of Seven Winters, an astonishing art project by Jack Raid. She names and describes the seven stages of consciousness of mind and search for a matching island. She then made a performing arts voyage of three and a half years. She spent the winters on isolated Arctic and Antarctic islands. After one winter on the Northern Hemisphere, she travelled to the Southern Hemisphere to spend another winter and vice versa. During her journey, she used the earth as her canvas and her life as paint. On the islands she inhabited, Jack used the local material for her artwork. She used the seafaring history, which had a great impact on the European way of thinking, as her compass. During her journey of seven winters, Jack Braid built seven towers, as well as seven chests, containing many installations, and she created seven books of paintings as well. The contents ingeniously represent the stages of consciousness of an individual, a nation, or a culture, in a universal language. Jack first travelled to the Faroe Islands to give form to the innocence of childhood. She then went on to the Falkland Islands to capture the struggle of life during puberty. Thereafter she travelled to Iceland for the spiritual wealth of a young adult. To encapsulate the tenderness of adulthood she moved on to South Africa. At Utka on the Aleutian Islands she concluded her work on the pride of a mature adult. The Chatham Islands became the destiny to examine and give form to regret. Finally, Spitsbergen offered the requisite solace to concentrate on reflection, affording the chance to mould works on the memories of the elderly. The first winter, Northern Hemisphere, the Faroe Islands, the greatest cruelty. Jack made a series of 22 paintings. The paintings represent the power of innocence as well as the blood which oozes from the one who hides oneself behind innocence while actually wanting to stay ignorant. Innocence out of unwillingness to learn is the greatest cruelty of mankind. The paintings picture stories or places where these innocent people were turned into tyrants. Sand, straw and pebbles are captured in daubs of dark paint which turn the paintings into pieces of earth which contain history. The second winter, Southern Hemisphere, the Falkland Islands. The struggle of the Falkland Islands. Jack's trip to the Falkland Islands took her 38 days due to a storm which lasted for two weeks.
because there weren't any roads on these islands, she took a job on the local supply ship. She became the first woman in history to board a ship on these islands. This gave her the opportunity to visit many of them. Later, she spent four months on a virtually uninhabited island. The only people she saw fleetingly were an old man and woman who also lived there. The paintings of the Falkland Islands represent the struggle of life and the search for an own identity. The word danger, painted in blood red characters, which marks most of the paintings like a scar, expresses that we all have scarred spirits. Desolate landscapes with a solitary figure in them, so we all have to find our own way. Paintings which have text in them, like the ones from the Falkland Islands, express that words aren't always meant the way we interpret them. We have to realise which emotions we connect with certain words. Paintings which aren't finished express the struggle of release, searching for new values and making statements. The third winter, northern hemisphere, Iceland, lost in the great white void. On her way to Iceland, Jack Brailed sailed into a raging storm which sunk five ships around her. Fortunately, the storm spared her and her ship. made a treasure chest which contains many small paintings. Many were burnt by fire and extinguished in the snow. Just like Iceland, a land of fire and ice. Some are decorated with gems, others glitter with gold or look like antiquated documents. They tell of a spiritual wealth, a treasure chest in which we can find solutions for spiritual pain. It is full of knowledge, experience and advice given to us in an earlier stage of our lives. Finding greatness in something small, getting wisdom from the things we bleed from or for. The fourth winter, Southern Hemisphere, South Africa. The Secret Chamber. Jack wanted to enter the secret chamber of the bind on Tristan da Cunha to search for the secret garden where the flower of tenderness would grow. On arrival in South Africa, she received a letter from the governor of Tristan da Cunha who forbade her to stay on the island. 
She tried everything to get to the island, but finally concluded that South Africa was actually the secret garden she was looking for. Although it wasn't an island physically, it definitely was emotionally. Here, she made a series of oil paintings on sea charts. A divinity of flowers, or a beautiful bista, bathing in the golden light of the afternoon, is covered with a second layer of paint processed into mossy green leaves. of the leaves form a cage-like framework akin to the lid in a stained glass window. They shut out the earthly beauty and capture in the darkness of religion a right for injustice. Roses which creep up out of clotted blood or tender white flowers which seem to have grown out of puddles of gooey blood. The flower of tenderness can only grow when it is fed on blood. Once one has truly caused and felt pain, one can consciously give and receive tenderness. The fifth winter, Northern Hemisphere, the Aleutian Islands. The Kingdom of the Wind. Jack spent this winter on Atka the outermost inhabited island of the Aleutian island chain. For months, she lived in a group of 65 Aleuts, which still live in a hunter-gathering society. She had to hunt with them in order to gain food. She created a mobile on Atka, in which paintings of mountains and breathtaking vistas portray the peaks and valleys of spiritual life. The paintings are made on wax paper, so they can be viewed from either side. They only exist in the present, floating between heaven and earth. The sixth winter, Southern Hemisphere, Chatham Islands. A lake of sorrow, the source of eternity. A torn up map of the world which holds three groups of sculptures represents how the world and our universal consciousness drifted apart. There are a series of sculptures made out of pumice stone on the east. They represent the holy values of the Moriori, the original inhabitants of the Chatham Islands. At the top there is a stack of paintings which express the northern European values. On the west is a collection of carved wood sculptures which give form to the Maori way of thinking. True sorrow is that our sacred values with which we surround ourselves in our will to survive will always keep us apart. This is symbolised by the lagoon in the middle, a silent lake of tears in which everyone standing on their own shores is staring into. Everyone sees the world through the reflection of one's own sacred values. Seventh winter, Northern Hemisphere, Spitsbergen, the silent heavens. On Spitsbergen, Breed lived in total darkness. She built a tower on the most dangerous place on earth, a glacier. 
she made a firmament of four enormous king's capes which hang from a chandelier of reindeer horn. The heavy capes are the memories with which we conceal ourselves. On the inside, a panorama of the King's Fjord, which was painted under the sky of the 19th of April, the date on which the sun stayed above the horizon for the first time that year, and Jack Breed completed her journey of seven winters. In the space above the panorama are woodcuts, pictures of recollections of herself on each island which the artist had etched into her soul during her journeys. They now form the truths in her life, memories which have replaced traditions. On the ground are four large grails the values with which we crown ourselves during the different stages of consciousness. Jack Braid has recorded her winter adventures by producing seven somewhat poetical books of paintings using both pen and brush. The titles are The Log Book, containing 85 pages, The Golden Mountains, containing 27 pages, The Book of the Secret Garden, 116 pages, the Crown of Fire, containing 62 pages. A Lake of Sorrow, the Source of Eternity, 54 pages. The Frozen World, containing 54 pages. Jack Braid also wrote the book The Journey of Seven Winters, which describes the project and the philosophy behind it. This book contains many photographs of the artwork and astonishing landscapes. The journey of seven winters can now be experienced as an immense insulation which one can wander through. <laughs> 